I am invisible and I am wet. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most relatable teen movie moments. That'll never be me, that'll never be me, that'll never be, never be me, no. For this list, we'll be looking at the best times where characters from adolescent to centered films reminded us of ourselves. Watch out for spoilers and let us know if we missed any of your favorite relatable moments in the comments below. Number 10, Foot Pop. The Princess Diaries. Well, as always, this is as good as it's gonna get. Mia Thermopolis is one of the most relatable teen characters in the history of the genre, and that's really saying something, seeing as she actually turns out to be a princess and all. What makes Mia so relatable isn't just her awkwardness or her perilous clumsiness, but her wants and desires. I just kind of hope that if he kisses me, um, my foot pops. Like any teenager, she hopes that her first experience with romance will be straight out of a fairy tale. She'll kiss a boy, and it will be so magical that her foot will just pop. Unfortunately for Mia, she learns the hard way that adolescent boys are not usually the romantic type. But don't worry, she gets her pop in the end. Number 9, Sister Dynamics, to all the boys I've loved before. Sisters are a different breed, in the best way, which is why we love seeing them represented accurately in our favourite media. Don't you find it kind of depressing that it's Saturday night and you're having a Golden Girls Marathon with your little sister? No. To All the Boys I've Loved Before is a great romance movie. After all, who doesn't love Peter Kavinsky? But its real secret weapon is how lovely and real the relationship between Lara Jean and her sisters is. Part of the tension stems from Lara Jean's crush on sis Margot's ex-boyfriend. It's all really well drawn out, but these two never lose sight on the fact that sisterhood comes first. I just thought you didn't need me anymore. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look what happened when you were gone. I I made a sex tape and I haven't even had sex. <laughs> <laughs> and as for little sister Kitty, well, she's just a trip all on her own. Anyone who has sisters of their own will probably recognize the dynamics here. I sent the letters. I'm gonna kill you. No! 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 Number 8, Word Vomit, Mean Girls. We've all said some things that would have probably been better left, well, unsaid. I have really bad breath in the morning. Ew. When you have the instinct to fit in, or to tell the truth, or whatever it may be, it can be hard to keep your thoughts to yourself. This is part of what makes Katie from Mean Girls so ultra-relatable. Hello? I know your secret. Oh god, busted. Just start apologizing and crying. No, play it cool. Secret? What are you saying about? When she gets to North Shore High School, she has a bit of trouble fitting in. And when she's asked to infiltrate the plastics, that increases tenfold. Katie often finds herself saying things that she shouldn't, a trait that comes to her head at a party when she's in a bedroom with her crush. You're not listening to me. Oh no, it was coming up again. Word vomit. No, wait a minute. What is this? Actual vomit. Gross and embarrassing. Who hasn't been here in one capacity or another? Number seven, realizing romantic feelings. Clueless. Why should I care what Josh thinks? Why was I letting it throw me into such turmoil? Watch out for the bike one! Oops, my bad. If we're being honest with ourselves, we've all been a little clueless. The actual film Clueless might magnify that teenage tendency by a million. But it doesn't mean that we can't relate to Cher and her antics. One of her most accessible moments, however, is the one where she actually gets a clue. In a wonderful sequence bolstered musically by All By Myself, the protagonist comes to a major realization. Oh my god. I love Josh. Once she's acknowledged her crush, she finds that she can't act normal around him. We get it. For anyone who comes to the realization that they like someone a little late, this sort of behavior is a total mood. You're so quiet. You haven't made me watch the real world. I care about the news. Since when? 
this now. Number six, awkward phone calls. Say anything. Asking someone out is difficult no matter how old you are, so it's hard not to cringe when you think of how horrible dating can be during adolescence. Say Anything expertly captures the awkwardness, sweetness, and angst of teenage romance in equal measure. Busy on Friday? Yeah, I have to help my father. Are you busy on Saturday? Saturday I have some things to do around the house. So you're, so you're monumentally busy? We're completely on Corey's side as she laments how terrible her ex-boyfriend is through song. But something about Lloyd's struggle to get through a sentence naturally when talking to Diane Court on the phone really makes us feel seen. Well, what a day, huh? Yeah. What a day. Yeah. Yeah. Quick question, do you, do you know who I am? Early on in the film, she returns his call and he asks her out. Hearing him stumble his way through the proposition perfectly exemplifies how tricky it is to be a teen in your feelings. I give you an enormous amount of tips, many tips, English tips. Well... The no tip, don't give any tips of any kind. Number five, second fiddle, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. We all like to think we're the main character in the story, but more often than not, that's not quite the case. I'm sorry, I mean, I know you don't care, but it does mean my ass. You think I don't care? I know you don't care. It would be cool to be able to be Ferris Bueller, twisting and shouting our way through a parade. But if we're being honest with ourselves, most folks aren't like him. The majority are probably more like Cameron. There's nothing he can't handle. I can't handle anything. School, parents, the future. That's not to say Cameron isn't great. He's definitely one of our favorites. And Alan Ruck gives a wonderful grounded performance. Watching the character play second fiddle to Ferris is one of the most relatable things about the movie. Ferris might be cool, but Cameron is a man of the people. He'll keep calling me. He'll keep calling me until I come over. He'll make me feel guilty. There's... A this is ridiculous, okay? I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go with, I'll go. Number four, coming out, Love, Simon. Even as the world becomes more accepting towards queer youth, it can be extremely difficult for anyone to come out to their family. This concept was captured beautifully in 2018's Love, Simon. Maybe I was jealous. You've been out since you were 16. It always seems so easy for you. Easy? Are you kidding me? Simon lives a pretty charmed life. He's got accepted parents, great friends, and everything seems to be going pretty well for him. But he has a secret. He's gay. And honestly, I can't even really explain why. Deep down, I know my family would be fine with it. Initially, he has trouble telling the truth. The film does a great job at portraying the fact that coming out can be scary, even when you're surrounded by good people. It also nails the relief that can come when you open up and are met with love. You get to exhale now, Simon. You get to be more you than you have been in... in a very long time. Number three, trying to belong. Eighth grade. High school is hard enough, but don't even get us started on middle school. To say it's no picnic would be an understatement. Heck, we had a hard enough time just watching this movie. You're always mean to me and I'm always nice to you and being mean isn't nice. And when someone does something nice to you, you're supposed to be nice back and you're always mean to me. And I know I'm like a good person because I'm always nice to you. Eighth grade is a modern coming of age classic that takes viewers through the worst parts of puberty. But the awkwardness alone isn't what makes it so relatable. What really puts the story over the edge is main character Kayla's desperate need to fit in. Calm down, <laughs> relax, take a deep breath. Come on, take your shirt off. No! Sorry. <laughs> when you're at that age where your body is changing and everyone's slowly making the transition to young adulthood, it's hard to know where you stand. The film subtly and sensitively captures how difficult and isolating that experience can be. People might not know, like, the real you. Like, if you only ever see, you know, some people at, like, school or something, then those people are only gonna know the school you. Number two, the best friends fight. Booksmart. In Booksmart, Amy and Molly have been the best of friends for ages. They rarely butt heads and are nearly connected at the hip. We've broken a lot of rules. One, 
We have fake IDs. Fake college IDs so we can get into their 24-hour library. Actors Caitlin Deaver and Beanie Feldstein have a wonderful rapport, and this connection reflects our own close friendships back at us. It also makes the characters' huge fight that much harder to stomach. You decide what we do and when we do it, and then we always have to do it together Yeah, I all have the to time. decide because you literally decide nothing. Like, I do all the heavy lifting in our friendship. You never take charge. Director Olivia Wilde beautifully frames the argument in a way that captures how earth-shattering spats between besties are in life, especially at that age. Once all the sound drops out, we no longer even really know what's being said, yet it doesn't matter. We connect to the sheer pain associated with the fact that this argument might be Amy and Molly's last, while thinking of our ride or dies. Uh, I know women apologize too much, but in this case I have so much to be sorry for. I was so selfish. I, I was being a coward. You called Malala. I lied to you, Mom. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. A Rebel. 10 Things I Hate About You. We all feel like cats sometimes. You could have some definite potential buried under all this hostility. I'm not hostile. I'm annoyed. The friendship, the sisterhood of the traveling pants. Sharing pants is the mark of true friends. To the pants. And the sisterhood. And this summer. And the rest of our lives. Together and apart. Getting older isn't all it's cracked up to be. 13 going on 30. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> what in the world? Singing Pocket Full of Sunshine, Easy A. We can't get this one out of our heads either. Boredom, dazed and confused. When you're this bored, it's easy to get into trouble. Would you look at this f***ing town, man? It's dead. Imagine how many people out there right now are Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mother-Daughter Relationships Ladybird One of the most formative relationships a girl can have is the one with the mother figure in her life. In 2017's Lady Bird, that relationship is brought to screen in a heartbreaking and lovely way. I wish that you liked me. Of course I love you. But do you like me? Lady Bird is an eclectic high school senior who wants to get out of Sacramento and make it to the East Coast. Throughout the movie, her bond with her mum, Marion, is fraught over things such as money and her desire to leave home. Thus, the conversations between mother and daughter feel lived in and honest, and are sure to make many feel seen. You give me a number for how much it costs to raise me, and I'm gonna get older and make a lot of money and write you a check for what I owe you so that I never have to speak to you again. Well, I highly doubt that you will be able to get a job good enough to do that. While we might witness that type of rawness in male-centric movies, it's rarer to find it in a female-led one. We're grateful we got it here. You want to do our favorite Sunday activity? I don't have a second shift. Yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.